Oh, Scott from Wessex Blades in England. The little shot you just saw there was my SL1 or SL2 Mora that I removed the coat in uh, just to give it a different look. And what I found was I was able to put ridges on it to give a better purchase for grit. I quite like it. So um, just chucked it in some linseed oil and letting that soak for a couple of days. See how it goes then. I actually like the look of those sort of rings around the outside and it, it felt in hand, it felt great, so I'll leave it at that. Um, what I wanted to cover today was I've had a request um, for a bit of a tutorial to show how you'd sharpen a knife in case you didn't have a little 1x30 or Franken grinder or um, TL90 worry thingy, whatever Mike's got. Um, and obviously it's a very, very fair point because not everybody has got gear like this or um, a battery drill with a flat wheel on. You can actually use that to sharpen your blades as well. Um, so I'll have a go at that in a, mi in a minute. But what I wanted to do initially was I've been using a lot of fire steel stuff in the garage yesterday. Obviously I'm back on the work both both jobs. Um, and literally to crawl out into the garage I want to be able to do an hour of something um, that's vaguely constructive. So I was just doing a little bit of fire practice, curling sticks up and just using ferro rods to do it. And what I found was that one of the best spines for ferro rod use was this Bocker knockoff. Um, it's ever so square and it really hoofs the, the sparks off of a ferro rod. Um, so what I want to do is show me doing a flat section on a Mora 510. This is the Ray Mears one I got from Ray Mears Bushcraft. Now most Moras that I see have the same profile on the top of the blade and it's a sort of double knuckle shape like that where I'm guessing the blade's been hit or pounded or stamped or something. And what's happened to you, have slightly been eye beamed so you've got a little bump, a bit of a well and then a little bump again. And um, all of the top is rounded so it's like a big wobbly M on the top of the blade. As you look in there like that you might be able to see two glints of light and a bit of a dish in the bottom. This does not get anything off of a ferro rod. So ferro rod, here's a bocker knocker, woo, straight away straight back. That's all the difference is. So I haven't really done much of that sort of thing because I always got a striker on these things or I use another knife I got on me. I generally go out with at least three knives. Um, so I haven't actually done many of my moras in terms of making a straight square spine on them. So rather than just do it myself and no one can share in it and no one can understand what do you mean square spine? The square spine on the back of the thing, you want a <laughs> the most abrupt 90 degree at each corner and then down again on the top of your knife so that you get a really abrupt scraping edge using the back of your knife so you remove the material off of your ferro rod, not the blade edge. It'll work but the severe temperature of that will burn off the edge of your knife because it's so thin you'll destroy your edge and what you want is a section on your carbon steel knife I don't know, 10mm, 50mm, 20mm, that'll do and the other advantage of having a really square spine is you can do shavings for collecting up and that's what I was doing last night, I was just shaving and I was thinking hang on a second I've got all these great great knives and I'm going to be using the edge or another knife to do it so what I'm going to do is just gradually work through my mores and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this 510 doing the back and that one. So let's get my gear on. It's very simple. Cool. Back in the garage again. So back to the front. Probably. Who cares? So here's my weedy little grinder, a little belt grinder, a little Clark 1x30. America, you got um, 
Grizzly do one, I expect Home Depot do one, or uh, Harbour Freight, it's just a tiny wee little thing, which is around like that. It's very useful because you've got this supported backstop thing here. And what I'm going to do is plant that there, hold that, and just go like that until I get a straight square section on the back of that bit there on the blade. So. Not quite yet. Quite a hard blade. section I've just dressed up, you see that glint of fresh metal? Where's that fresh edge there? There you go. So now not only is that better for fire rods, sparky roddy things like this, but it should shave wood. Fine little stick. Should be something nearby. There's a bit of hickory on a lump hammer and it shaves hardwood up there. So that is done by a really, really cheap, easy to source little mini belt grinder. But there's no reason why you can't simply get a stone, put it that way in a vise and you go Like that. Now you don't need to do it dry, you could do it with water if you want. That's rough. So, vicious, vicious edge now, and it works two ways over. The other thing is, is now you've got that exposed section of steel, if you had a piece of flint, see you in a minute. Okay, so just going to the garden and I've picked a piece of flint nothing too special with a sharp edge on it now I ain't no hero if I go out in the, in the middle of nowhere or woods or just somewhere 500 meters from my house I'm not going to go out without a ferro rod okay if I want to do bow drill practice I've always got it um, the last ditch is that you can find a very, very hard rock, just substantially harder than your carbon steel blade, and you should be able to smack tiny little slivers of steel off of your blade if you lost your ferro rod. Carry two. Okay, that's, that's my answer for things like that. If you use one, why are you just carrying one? But hey, so what this gives you is another chance. That's that's all it's for. For all you diehards out there, that goes on there. Now, quite how brilliant they're going to be, and they're not. There's nothing like a ferro rod spark. 
nothing like a ferro rod spark. very weak orangey sparks and it's the back to front it's the other theory of what a ferro rod is with the ferro rod this scrapes that off this scrapes that off with the flint that's harder this bites that off the steel off of the knife but if you ever forget your fire rod and you haven't got any other source of thing, you find a hard rock, you've got an exposed back of your blade, carbon steel mine. I don't make much else things, I just, my, my brain steals simple as thing, this isn't carbon. And you've got a chance. The other thing is, you know, the steel on a 510 goes about there. But, that's how to improve the versatility of your bushcraft knife and make it a little bit more general purpose and allow it to get better shower of sparks off your ferro rod and if you're into practicing using flint whatever there's your steel striker ready to go you haven't got to go and buy one of those ones that are like horseshoe shapes so next thing is to sharpen the blade using stone okay so First of all, what I need is a blade I need to work on. Um, now, I've seen the legend that is Ben Orford do two blade sharpening tutorials, um, both of which are actually fantastic. Um, the only thing is, is that what he was sharpening was a Scandi, which, once you get into knowing how a Scandi, a true Scandi edge is, it's done. That's it. So, it's the, it's the easiest one to learn on, okay? So, this isn't the true Scandi, but uh, your Scandi, you have the bevel of the knife where it's sharpened or ground off on the machine, and you literally find the bevel by lifting the blade up until it, it just sits flat on the stone, and you just go backwards and forwards and back the other way. Um, a lot of stuff is convex, and then you're, 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 all you're doing is you put, you're putting a terminal bevel on the edge of it. So what I thought I'd do is rather than do the most simplest thing in the world at some point, um, I'll pick something a little bit more challenging because I've got a small job I need to do. It's my mini hatchet. So, just tidy this up a minute. New Wessex Blades Mini Hatchet. Here we go. So what I need to do is get an edge on it. Because it doesn't have one. Okay. So prove it hasn't got an edge. That it's never going to do it. All right. It's never in a million years. So you can tell by the well-maintained edge. This needs a lot of work. So, what I've done, obviously I want to speed it up a little bit for myself, is I've got a really, really cheap stone. Now, the stones you can get off of um, Amazon, generally speaking UK, or um, US. I got this one a while ago. Master of what's it? Dual whetstone. It was a set of 23. It was about 18 pounds. 
um, there's a Japanese waterstone by Ice Bear so you can spend a lot of money but what I've purposely gone and got is from I'm guessing like a Home Depot equivalent in the UK is a cheap ass double carborundum me looking horrendous thing like this okay so so fine is the white and medium is the grey so what I want to do first up is put a bevel on it so if I put that in a vice when you put it in a vice you're not tightening it up really quite really tight because you'll just crumble the stone so it's just in the vice like that Ideally, you'd want it in a, a wooden carrier. Took me wet tonight. You do want it in something like that. It's easy enough to make up. It's a few four bits of wood and a bit of ply. But we're doing everything from basic. So what I need to do is choose an angle. Now, if you remember those set squares at school, 30 degrees is about that. 90 is there, and there's your 60. What you want is somewhere around 10. So if that's 90, 60, 30, that's about 10. I want something like that. Now, I've just gone from there to there. Initially put in the grind on, put in an edge on it. You can go backwards and forwards. Can you see I'm going like that and back out? Like that and back out. Should see the rust is coming off. I'm not quite getting to that edge. So that's about 30, 10, 10 is about there. About there. Okay, so I'm putting. an edge on creating a point there and I've got to go back the other way so I'm here and I'm going both ways is fine at the moment because I haven't met in the middle going like that both directions backwards and forwards at the moment it's not going to do any harm keep going like that and every now and again what you want to do is clear the grit of the stone because what's happened is, is it's filled up with not only particles of the stone that's been removed but bits of steel and rust as well so now and again I'm going to empty it out obviously my rubbishy voice is getting water on it I only paid 10 quid for it 25 years ago in time I'll get another one. And just keep going like that. One thing you don't want to do is dink a corner off of the stone. So be very deliberate about where you're going and try not to drag the edge along a, a corner of your stone. Just keep going backwards and forwards like that. See you in a bit. Okay. I think I've just about got there. Just about. So all I do now is, rather than go backwards and forwards, I go 
forwards on the edge as if the edge I'm creating is trying to just scrape the stone off like a plane but don't go at it crazy this is plenty of weight now obviously this is like one of those artificial sedimentary stone things a far better stone will last a bit longer than this but it can be done with something that costs a pound or just over a dollar it's getting there so clear the, the surface again because it's just going to get clogged up with the cheapy stone particles just coming off that feels like there's an edge I'll have a go on the fine now with these it's not really coarse it's quite, it's quite medium and fine but coarse and medium that's why having a range of different stones is great same again trying to scrape the stone off and I should start seeing despite the fact that the stone's quite white I'm getting a middleish grey sort of tide on there as the steel is still coming off yep working so now what's happened is the action of the grit that was on the medium stone has obviously implied itself onto the steel so you've got coarse scratches on the end of the blade I'm now evening those out so I'm getting a, a nicer more a, an edge with more finesse and it'd be less prone to break it. See, so this is quite a crude way of doing it. Okay, so from no edge beforehand, it's a piece of wood. That's an axe head. Okay. Now, if you've got the gear, you can actually go a lot finer than that. So I'm guessing mine's a thousand on that side, six thousand on another. I guess the stones that I've just been using could be something like. Let's have a look at it. 300. Maybe 600, 300 and 600. So this one here, that dark one is now 1000. That does feel a lot better. I wonder if it'll go for a bit of thick paper. Not quite. It'll saw through. And that's an axe. So you can put a pretty useful edge on an axe using a stone like this. And it's all down to how patient you are with it. If you're doing a knife, it would be, for, I don't know, four times easier to stone out. Clout the trifle. 
boom. That's the blade. That was a forge. Now I've just found the bevel. I've lifted it up and it's just sat on the bevel. That's quite coarse. Put it on the fine side. I can flip it over because the water's gone from the top to the bottom. Now I've turned it over and the water's now in this half of the stone. Crappy, crappy knife, a knockoff. There, it's, there's an edge on it. Obviously, I would have took that edge off and ruined it by putting it on the course. So I've got that edge back in a few strokes, and that's on a knockoff. So, any questions? Hopefully, that's made a bit of sense for most people. But basically, the when the stone's there like that in the vice, you've found the angle that it wants to sit at and gone like that and like that like that and like that and just remove the steel okay so my was going to relax I was on like that and just going like that and then back the other way and the reason to go back the other way if you can imagine the steel as, as you've scraped it off, you'll get a little burr kick over onto the blind side. So what you're actually doing is, is as the, the steel kicks over, you want to nap it back the other way. And gradually, gradually work it away till there's no burr left, or you strop it off. But a stone like that, on a, a blade like this, is, is plenty good enough for practicing, getting your skills up, and getting better at it, whilst you ain't got a grinder. So I hope that helped. The chap who left me a message on stone work and that was on one it was a pound in england i suppose you get it for a dollar at a home depot or is it menards i think no hardware stores are so it's got wessex plays with a bit of stone work and the um improvement on a bushcraft blade by squaring off the spine see you in the next one